excited to celebrate the church's 100th anniversary. Amen. We are grateful to God that this year, 2022, marks 100 years of ministry in the name of Christ our Savior. And so in this calendar year, we'll be celebrating the church's anniversary. And so I want to prepare, invite you now to prepare your heart and mind to be a part of the celebration. I'm thankful for our co-chairs with whom I met back in November about their plan to help the church to lead us in celebrating this anniversary in the persons of uh, Deacon Syl Morgan Smith and Trustee Linda Lely. We look forward to their leadership of this wonderful celebration, and I know they have been fast at work preparing committee assignments and developing, of uh, broadening the plan that they've already shared with me as they prepare to launch out and we together celebrate New Hope's 100th church anniversary. Happy birthday, New Hope, and we look forward to the celebration that lies ahead as we walk into the future with hope in Christ, celebrating 100 years. God bless you, and I look forward to what will unfold in these coming weeks as we celebrate our 100th anniversary. Hello, I'm Pastor Downing. I'm Reverend Jerry Ochsner, assistant to the pastor in visitation and bereavement at New Hope. We're grateful to God today for the host of leaders, members, and volunteers who support our ministry in caring for this fellowship. We're grateful to God for Reverend Ochsner and for the many years of dedicated service that he has given the New Hope Fellowship in the name of Christ, which we know continues, amen. And so we come today to simply share with you that in this very changing season of a global pandemic, we realize that communication is one of the most challenging things that we've had to grow around every single day. And so we come today simply to communicate with you the way that God has blessed us to care one for another. At each and every opportunity any of us encounter where we know a member of the fellowship has become ill, is in need of prayer, visitation, support, or family and bereavement we realize that we have a wonderful channel of communication that's been a blessing to this fellowship for many, many years. The first thing we do is we contact Reverend Oaks. You can contact the church office at 303-322-5200. And you can leave a voicemail for Reverend Oakster in box five. In fact, once you press five, your phone call goes directly to Reverend Oakster's phone. Amen. Reverend Oakster returns your call if he doesn't get it at that moment. And from there, a chain of events begins, which alerts the leadership, the deacon board, our sunshine and sunrise ministry, and myself as to the need of care for members of this fellowship. I am so grateful for Reverend Jerry Oakster, for the chair of our deacon board. Hey, Amen. You're welcome. Our deacons, our deaconesses, and our sunrise ministry for the wonderful work we do together to care for the people of God in this fellowship. And so I want to encourage and remind you that upon being alerted about the need of care and a member of the fellowship, contact Reverend Oakstrom and Reverend Oakstrom begins our chain of communication through the congregation's leaders, members and volunteers and myself, after which we follow up together as a team of pastoral support in this fellowship. So we thank God for you, Reverend Oakstrom, as always. Amen. Amen. We're grateful to God for all of those who support our system of pastoral care as we support the needs of this congregation through a global pandemic. God bless you all. May heaven continue to smile upon us as we journey together with hope in Christ. Amen. Psalm 122 verse 1 reads, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so if you are like me this morning and you are entering the Lord's house from your house, that is okay. Let's go to the house of the Lord with thanksgiving, with rejoicing, and with praise because God has seen fit to grant us another day, another week, and another opportunity to praise God's holy name. Won't you help me this morning, New Hope, as we enter this worship moment by helping me to complete a meditative litany. The way this litany will work is I will read a line of it and I will hold my hands up uh, to prompt you to repeat these words. Come close, dear Lord. Let me try that once at home. Come close, dear Lord. 
perfect. So I'll read a line, I'll hold up my hands, and we will find our way into worship this morning by welcoming the Holy Spirit to be with us through this litany. God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Come close. There is nowhere we can go and nothing we can do that can separate us from your love. And so when life's realities discourage our dream, when we have exhausted the resource of strength and have nothing left to give, when we don't see ourselves in the beauty, strength, and love with which you created us. In moments, dear Lord, where we find ourselves desperately thirsting for renewed vision and refreshed purpose. Come close, dear Lord. Meet us in this worship service. Welcome to Worship New Hope. May God bless us this morning as we praise God's holy name. Hello, New Hope family and friends. We are grateful to God for another opportunity to gather together in worship as we celebrate Communion Sunday, this first Sunday of February 2022, as we celebrate hope in Christ together with New Hope Baptist Church. Welcome to worship. As we gather together in worship today, 
we also gather recognizing who's brought us to worship. That God has been so gracious, kind, and faithful to our lives that we dare not forget an opportunity to return in faithfulness back to God. And so we're grateful for your faithfulness and giving to God across these months. In fact, across more than a year and a half, you and I together have been returning our tithes and our offerings to the storehouse of God at New Hope Church. We thank God for you today. We hope you've received our letter of celebration, of appreciation, of value for your giving to God in fellowship. And so we invite you again today as you and I return our tithes to the storehouse. You can give today by a number of different means. You can give on the New Hope Church website at newhopechurchdenver.org on our give page through a secure PayPal link there. You can give utilizing your device or mobile giving, your mobile app, givelify.com on your cell phone, your tablet, or any mobile device. It's a mobile giving app that's safe and secure that we've used here for years together as a fellowship. You can also give by mailing in your tithe to the church office at 3701 Colorado Boulevard, Denver, Colorado. And finally, you can hand deliver your tither offering to the church office every Tuesday between 9:30 and 4, 4 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. We invite you to continue to strive in faithfulness, for God has been so gracious and kind to us as we live through these changing moments in our world, as we think about all of the challenges, catastrophes, calamities that have occurred around this planet and the mere fact that God continues to keep and sustain us. So I would invite you to give as a means of telling God thank you, to give out of the abundance God has given to you in what is a time of great scarcity for so many, and to give because we know the Bible tells us it's right to give unto our God. And so we thank God for you as you and I continue in our faithfulness and giving to God for the God who has given so much to us. God bless you as you give. I am delighted to read the word this morning, which comes from Psalm 139, and we will read verses 7 through 18. That is Psalm 139, verses 7 through 18, and it reads, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, there you are. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night all around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I, to, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. <laughs> disrupts the atmosphere we need a song that God will hear a song that exalts 
the King of Kings, a song that all nations will come together and sing that song is. Loves it when we begin to bless him. You are holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. Lord, you are holy. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Lord you are holy. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are, Lord. We need a song that demands victory. We need a song that will make demons flee. A song that brings life to the least the lost and the last, a song for today, tomorrow and ages past, that song is, Lord, you are holy, Lord, Lord. Oh, yes, you are, Lord, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We thank God for the reminder today that our Lord is holy. Holy is the Lamb of God. We're so grateful today with everything we have to face in this world that one thing to be sure is our God is holy. We thank God for you today. We're grateful to God for this choir, praise team, for these voices who have gathered to lead us into the presence of God's spirit, to usher us into worship, and to lift up the praises of our God. Lord, you are holy. Holy. Amen, somebody. I want to turn your attention now to the 139th Psalm of God's Word as we share together this Word of God 
And I'll just reiterate one of these verses that has been read for you today. Psalm 139, I'll be reading verse 18. David writes, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we thank you for this new day you've made. We thank you, God, for the privilege to gather from wherever we may be, O Lord, to worship your holy name. And as we worship God this moment, we ask that you will you will guide our hearts and our minds, O Lord, around your word. We ask, O God, that you would bind us together, one spirit, soul and heart to another as we seek, O God, to grow in your word. We ask, God, that you would help us to remove any distractions that stand in our way. Anything, oh God, that might uh, guide us away from the path you have for us to receive right now today. At this word, oh God, would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. And with it, God, as we follow and serve your word, we know we'll please your will. And our lives, God, be blessed because of it. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. I want to preach from this subject today. Dreams don't expire. Will you say that with me? Dreams don't expire. Amen. Last week, CBS Morning Show highlighted two young people, Trey Jackson and Mia Coley, whose childhood dreams were to become commercial airline pilots in this country. However, as they began pursuing their dreams with training and practicums and study, they encountered the $100,000 price tag required to be met for those who would secure an airline pilot's license. However, Trey and Mia didn't know a New York-based flight academy was in the works to help fulfill dreams just like theirs. The program called Red Tails, in honor of Tuskegee Airmen, is what Jackson called an answer to prayer, which will graduate he and Mia Coley with pilot's licenses for commercial aviation. God's presence in these young people's experience is illumined through what I believe we find in the 18th verse of this 139th Psalm. Here David says, when I awake, I'm still with you. David reminds us that uh, that that he has been through so many things in his life with God, yet. He wakes up to find no matter what he's been through, no matter what he's overcome, no matter what he's endured, that when his eyes open and his feet are on solid ground, as it were, that God is still by his side. Old Testament King David is trying to describe in this passage family that whether he's awakened from a bed in the depths, whether he's settled on the far side of the sea, whether he's been hidden by darkness and the night around him feels brighter than day, he shares with us that God is still with him. This old family is a reminder to me that no matter what you've been through, dreams don't expire. Oh, yeah. We come to this understanding, remembering that God ordained David to become king of Israel, general of the army, restorer of godly worship and the lifeline to Jesus Christ before David was a win or aware. God saw, it says in this psalm, David's unformed body and wrote the plan in the heavenly book before it came to be. It helps you and I to remember that family God has written a plan for your life. God's poured a dream into your journey and God made plans for you before your index finger took shape, your eardrum opened or your eyes first came into focus. David says in your mother's womb, God began writing the plans of your life. God began putting your dreams in context and bringing ideas to shape and form that he hoped and pray you and I pursue. I came by to tell you that even then, before you and I had the umbilical cord cut, before the doctor patted us on our rear or saw the breath of life flow through us, God gathered around tables with angels and drafted the supernatural plans for our lives. God has a dream for you, a great glorious goal. And in fact, I declare today that you and I receive it every now and then. 
Oh, yeah, that's that glorious idea that whispers in your ear out of nowhere. Uh, that's the victorious vision your eyes weren't expecting to see. Oh, yes, that is the, the gift you have that no one else can replicate. It's the dream God's poured in your life. That's the source of righteous work that won't let you go. And as David said, not only is it a dream that God gave you, it's written in God's book. And family, whatever is written in God's book, I came by to tell you the world around you has got to obey. Oh, yeah, there will be obstacles in your path. There will be trouble to overcome. There will be hurdles to cross. But whatever is written in God's book, it will come to pass if you follow. This means the cosmos has got to conspire. The universe must avail itself in its opportunities. Every atomic particle in existence must operate in favor of what God has ordained because it's written in God's book. That's why doors open when you walk in the right direction. That's why obstacles eventually bow when you yield to the tug of God's task. That's why if you just put your shoulder to the plow, you find the pieces of your dream falling into place because God poured this dream into your life. God wrote it in his book and God has dispatched angels, armies of angels to help you accomplish it. So I came by to share this simple word today from the 139th Psalm that though you may find yourself on the other side of the sea from where you know you belong, though you may have made a bed in the depths and though darkness may shine like the noonday, I came to tell you your dreams do not expire. Oh, God. That God has poured a dream into your life. And David says, the sum of what God said to you is so vast. Oh, it means that its ability to bless you and others is immeasurable. IG Reels, Facebook friends, and Twitter followers can't compare. No social status, no esteemed group of friends or material item can match the dream God has poured into your life. What God whispered, no matter how long ago, still stands. No matter how seemingly unattainable, no matter how hard you tried and it didn't seem to work when you stopped, I came to tell you, the dream does not exist. That's why David alluded to his carelessness and his quagmires. Oh, he's not trying to glorify his missteps, but he's reminding us, family, the devil would love us to think that the cot you made in hellish places, your comfort in conflicting spaces, quashed the dream's viability. David put himself in some predicaments, he's reminding us, just like us. He fluffed pillows in settings that compromise his spirit. David also reminds us that, no, that though we knew what the optimal output looked like for us, though we knew what it meant to do our best, to hit the, hit the highest mark on the scale, that sometimes you and I sacrificed a few ticks from the top. Sometimes we quit too soon. Sometimes we settled on the far side of the sea from where God desired us to sail. And sometimes, family of God, darkness hid our heads. The path God designed became blurry. As for David, while hunted by Saul, sometimes the nights of our lives felt like an Alaskan evening in winter. Yet, whether there were blockers in your path, evil unrelenting, grief in heaps, sickness for days, or and the enemy eating popcorn while watching your peril, David reminds us, when I awake, God is still with me. And so it means, family, no matter what you may have been through from the time you heard God's dream to now, your dream does not expire. Is there a worshiper who will give God honor, glory, and praise that no matter what life takes you through, your dream does not expire? I hear Paul saying, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Not height, not death, not principality or powers to be. Nothing can separate you from the love of God and nothing can take away God's dreams for your life. Dreams do not expire. Oh no, David said, when I awake, I am still with you. <laughs> It doesn't matter what load you to sleep. Doesn't matter 
what distracted you from the path God planned for your life. It does not matter. There ain't no devil in hell, ain't no hater at your job that can block you from what God has poured into your soul to achieve. Why? Dreams don't expire. And I'm glad today to testify on David's behalf that no matter how far you feel from where you believe you belong in God's way, dreams don't expire. Somebody said, sounds good, Pastor. But the wealth gap has widened, you know. Sounds good, Pastor. But COVID canceled all my plans. Yep, sounds good, but I've been waiting so long, it's got to be too late now. No, dreams don't expire. How do I know? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> there are three things in this text I think can help us to figure that out. First is, dreams don't expire because God remains productive in our predicaments. You ought to say that with me. God is productive in our predicaments. Here it is, verse 18. Verse 18 says, David says, when I awake, I'm still with God. In other words, neither anything we've endured, any strife we've caused, envy that motivated our actions or procrastination uh -huh, that put us off track, has caused God to cease being with us. <laughs> that, that no matter what has befallen you or what you and I stepped away from, when we awake, God still got God's eyes on the prize. You ought to shout right there. That ought to be good news, that no matter how you and I have been misled or have taken misstep, God stays where God said God would be. So that when you come back to yourself, when, when you regain your clarity, when, when you recover your sense of who you are and where you belong, God is right there. Can I get one witness who will just tell God thank you? No matter how many times you were led astray, how many times you got off track, how many times you put off what God told you to do, that when you came back to yourself, you looked up and realized, oh my God, the Lord is still here. God is productive in our predicaments. What you mean, Pastor? Because God doesn't just sit and wait on you. God keeps working while you and I are not exactly where we need to be. So when you wasted time, when you got off track, that doesn't mean God walked away. No, no. David says, when I awake, I'm still with you. It means God was still there opening doors. God was still there pushing down mountains. God was still there raising up valleys and making crooked places straight because God's productive even in your predicament. Even when the night shines like day, God is still there saying you can make it because dreams don't expire. God's still fighting your battles. God's still putting the enemy in his place. God is still making ways out of no ways, even when you are not on the right track. And that's why, family, when you wake up and come back to yourself, you can say, oh, my Lord, God is still with me. Oh, God, dreams don't expire because God's productive even in our predicaments. Oh, late dean of Howard Divinity School Chapel, Howard Thurman said, he said, no matter what corrupt corridor we've darkened and how far down it we've traveled, God continues to be the escape door back to where we belong. Oh my God. Ah, it means though we may have misspent time, met enemies that obstructed us, God never ceased pursuing or looking out for us. God's productive means God's bestowing mercy on our mess. God's clarifying chaos we step into. God's sending signals even when you haven't received them. God continues to be productive even in our predicaments. Some months back, I was uh, heading myself home and uh, driving my plug-in hybrid vehicle. And uh, just like you, sometimes I got hard-headed and the vehicle was low on gas. It's hybrid, means it's a small gas tank, but motored by electricity. You plug it in, motor uh, uh, charges, battery, large lithium battery charges. Uh, and, and, and that fuels the vehicle. When the charge runs down, you got gas, and that keeps you going. On this occasion, I'd run out of gas, was low on charge. But I said, I ain't stopping. 
I'm going home. I'm going to see my wife. I'm going to get in and I'll be all right. Here I am. And as I'm riding, I see that little electricity meter dropping down to zero. Gas on E. I said, I can make it. I'm riding. Suddenly, family, radio goes silent. He goes off. I hear nothing. The car is just coasting. I promise you, I coasted a good half mile before it occurred to me the car is not running. <laughs> oh, and so I literally coasted to the shoulder. Shh, nothing going on. <laughs> I sat there in silence at night in the shoulder of the road. And I began to rack my brain as to what to do next. And I heard, I promise you, I felt, I sent something say, sit still. I sat there and pushed nothing. I prayed. I quieted my mind. I said, I'm not that far. If I got to walk, I just walk. And I said, well, if I got to call somebody, I'll call, but I'm just going to sit and wait. And don't you know, I sat three, four minutes, about five minutes into my sitting, the green ignition light for the car began to glow. I said, what in the world going on with that? I sat there, and then I was reminded that it's a hybrid vehicle, which means that it is being, the battery is being regenerated when the vehicle is not moving. You got to catch this. So the longer you sit still, family, the more the battery is able to regenerate. <laughs> No radio running, no heat going, no car moving, no wheels, no engine crank, no combustion going on. It's just still. And I thought to myself, if that ain't like how God works in our lives, I don't know what is. That just when you think the battery is dead, when life has come to an end, when you're at the end of your track, where your chance is shot, your time is lost, you can't get back to where you belong. God reminds you, I've been productive even in your predicament. I'm recharging your battery. I'm regenerating your opportunity. I'm rebuilding your chance. I still got your dream in my hand. If you just keep on pressing on, you'll learn dreams do not expire. I pushed that green button, the car lit up, and I went to the gas station and made my way home. The chef said, you had a good trip home? I said, baby, everything was all right. Because dreams don't expire. Yes, sir. But even in our predicaments, God's still working. And dreams don't expire because God's capacity is unconditional. Verse 18 again. David says, when we awake from whatever, this is my interpretation, when we awake from whenever, whatever, and wherever we were delayed, we're still with God. The subtle nuance here is that we awaken no matter how untimely so to the one who can do all things well. That when we awake, we awaken to God. <laughs> can you imagine, can I just put the kickstand down for a second? That, that just think about all the times you've been late in life and got left somewhere, you ain't gotta tell nobody, just, uh, just nod your head, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that if you think back on all the time in your life that you showed up late and got ridiculed, that you, you, you didn't make the, the deadline and, and lost the opportunity, that, 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 that folks sat somewhere or, or on a highway off-ramp or a parking lot awaiting and said, ah, no, nah, they ain't coming, and pulled off. But aren't you glad? You ought to just shout right here. Is there anybody glad that God doesn't work like that? Is there anybody glad that God doesn't work like that? That no matter how long and delayed you have become or been, there's a God who David says when you wake up and come to yourself, you're still with God. God's capacity is unconditional. So no matter how late come in your relationship, how wise in years before you wed, how mature your motherhood, overdue you are getting out of debt, God's capacity is not affected by you or me. God was there and God is there when you awake and has held your opportunity in his hands. Ho oh, ho! That when you come to yourself, you learn, family, that God, your dream doesn't expire because God has got a dream that he gave you in his hands. You say, Pastor, you don't know how much I put on God. You don't know how broad God's shoulders are. That this same God who made the heavens and the earth 
who shaped the stars and flung them into a midnight sky, who put the sun in its oriental chamber, who made the water clear and the brook grass green, who the same God who made the elephant, the giraffe, and the hippopotamus is the same God who holds your opportunities in his hands. And God's capacity to do so is unconditional. It means that God's potential for accommodating, for storing, for maintaining, for holding your dream in his hands is unconditional. Ain't nothing that can outweigh the capacity that God has to hold on to your dream. Is there anybody glad today that you ain't got to worry about whether or not it'll work out? Now don't play with God. God don't like clowning. God will not be mocked. But don't you worry that somehow God ran out of storage space. God's time drew close. God's patience got thin. That ain't how God operates. All through the pages of my Bible, we meet the heroes and sheroes for whom God's capacity was unconditional. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I know it's troublesome for some because we know people who admire us for what we can do for them and when we can do it. And when when we can't, won't or are led otherwise, somehow their capacity for loving us lessens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know folks who are excited about who we are as long as we can meet their deadline, satisfy their expectations. But I came to tell somebody God's capacity is unconditional. It's not conditioned based on what you do or don't do. God loves you because of who you are. You ought to say amen right there. Oh, that ain't, no, 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 no. Let me pause right here. That God loves you before who, for who you are. Yellow, white, red, black, brown, indigenous, Latino, African descent, Anglo-Saxon, European, African, Asian, uh, up top, North Pole, South Pole, in between. God does not desire you to be in anybody else than who God made you because God's capacity to keep your dream is not conditioned on what you do, don't do, when, where, or how because God gave it to you because God loves you as you are. And so I came to tell somebody God's capacity is, isn't contingent on timing. God's not worried about societal expectation. God's not going to bless you on your network or your net worth. God's blessing you because God decided before you were born in your mother's womb, David said, when you were just an, an embryo, the Lord said, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to bless her and she and they will be in my own image. Dreams don't expire. I was on my computer last week and uh, working on some stuff and I just like I opened up a bunch of windows and browsed over here and searched over there. I let them open that I might get back to my document, import the information, search a little further, research a little more, compare this with that, put that into the document, and go back to work. And then I got a call, stepped away from the computer, went took the phone call, had a cup of tea, sat down for a while, walked off, computer went to sleep and shut down. I had to make my way to the church, so I packed up the laptop, put it in my bag, came on to the church. I got to my desk, I opened up the laptop, I turned on the power and I began opening up my apps and all my programs. And then I clicked the button for my browser. And as I clicked the browser button, a message popped up and it says, ah, your web browser closed improperly. Would you like to restore the tabs that you were working on when it closed? I said, huh, isn't that something? And so I called the show. I said, babe, how does that happen? She said, well, you have a, a processor on your laptop that holds, that has memory, that's able to store uh, the history of what you were working on. So that when you return, even though you didn't close properly, the memory can still hold whatever you're already searching. So I click yes, and don't you know every tab pop back up, boop, 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 boop. I said, oh my God. And family, it reminds me of how God's grace and mercy operates with our dreams. That just when you think you walked off and oh, you, 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 you disconnected in ways improper with the dream God gave. Yeah, God don't like climbing. I told you that. 
But the good news is that God's gift and dream to you is not conditioned on what you do and don't do. So when you ever get yourself back together, get your life in tune with the way of God got for you, I found out God will reopen those windows that you close. Oh yeah! God will restore those tabs you shut down improperly. And God will remind you, I'm still here and you're still my child. Is there a worshiper today who will testify, Pastor, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been off the track, came back, and found out my dream was still in God's hands. Is there anybody who will just shout, yeah, yes, sir, Lord, I'm so glad today that God's capacity is not conditioned on what I did and didn't do, but on the fact that God loves you. And for that reason, dreams don't expire. And then family, <laughs> dreams don't expire because God's opportunities awaken us. <clears throat> dreams don't expire because God's capacity is unconditional. Lady. Dreams don't expire because, oh well, shucks, because God's productive even when we're in predicaments. And dreams don't expire because God's opportunities, they awaken us. Verses 17 and 18, David said, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. They would outnumber the grains of sand if I were to count them. And when I awake, I am still with you. David tells of awakening at the thought of vast sums of God's thoughts concerning him. It brings to mind the idea that dreams don't expire because the opportunities God's ordained for you don't leave you asleep. That the dream God poured into your life doesn't negate your capacity to attain it even when you've been negligent. That God's dream for you doesn't overlook you even when you're mentally and emotionally absent. You ought to say amen right there. They, that God's dream is so glorious, so good, so God ordained, so filled with wonder that even when you and I are asleep at the wheel of life, you ought to testify that God's dream has the power to push you when you're down, to, to pull you rather when you're down, to push you when you're moving slow, like a toddler It'll speak even when you're not ready to hear. And like a voice flowing through the hills, it'll echo through your soul. God's dream, family, has a power to wake you, to rouse you, to stir your soul, to convict your conscience and say, get up. The dream did not expire. Howard Thurman says the dream of God is like a whisper in the wind. Oh, it just blows by when you least expect it to remind you that the Though you might be off track, wake up, sleeper. This thing is still in the, within your reach if you just take on God's hand. God's opportunities will awaken us. Convicting pleas from within. Lyrics and songs that remind you. Passing conversations that strike you. The Spirit's movement in one moment to another. All of these things God sends to wake you up, to tell you the dream is still possible. Is there a worshiper who will just thank God today that God's dream, the vast sum of how God considers you will wake you up, stand you up from your slouching position and put you where you belong. I know I'm not by myself. You ought to just stop right here and tell the Lord thank you. That though some of us want everybody to think we always had our feet on the starting block. We, we always hit the mark. We always made the grade. You ought to just stop right here, testify and shame the devil. That it wasn't always that you had yourself together. But sometimes when you are fast asleep in life, God's dream woke you up and said, put your shoulder to the plow because the dream has not expired. Oh, yeah. Langston Hughes said, wrote this poem, uh, what happens to a dream deferred? He says, does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does a dream deferred explode? And then Lorraine Hansberry came along and she said, no, no, Langston. Let me tell you about a dream deferred. She wrote that powerful play, Raisin in the Sun. 
And uh, as she, she went on to describe this African-American family in Chicago, who, Harlem, if you will, uh, they, whose lives were caught between a rock and a hard place. But they decided, no, no, we're not going to let our dream be denied. And yes, yes, they met the goal of their dreams at the end. And it reminds me, family, that though some dreams may be deferred because of the goodness of our God, your dreams are not denied. That dreams do not expire. And as we trace the writings of Lorraine Hansberry and Langston Hughes of James Baldwin uh, uh, and on down the line, we find these powerful stories of those who came by to teach us in this life that your dreams do not expire. Don't you worry about how long it took you to get to where you belong. Don't you worry about how long the road ahead may seem from where you stand because your dreams do not expire. If God gave them to you, oh yeah, my Bible says the God that began a good work in you will complete it. Oh yes, sir. By the end of the day, dreams do not expire. And because they don't, you and I got to keep on pushing. Yeah. And that's what Curtis Mayfield said. Keep on pushing. Yeah. Keep on pushing, family. And it may seem like, ah, time has passed me by. The doors have closed. The window is shut. But you just got to remember the unconditional capacity of your God. You got to remember. Oh, yes, you do. I remember that. Family, your God's opportunities awaken us. And you got to remember, even when you've been caught by predicaments, God's still being productive, working, shaping, fashioning your dream to come to pass. And no matter what anybody tells you, as long as you still got breath in your lungs, blood in your veins, your mind working halfway good. You may as well say amen. All the craziness we've been through, all the upside down and ridiculous things that have happened in our world, if you're still here breathing and alive, your dream has not expired. And I would encourage you today that as we close this worship experience, as we make our way to Holy Communion, that you would just think about today the fact that dreams don't expire. That, that there is a world around us would love to tell you that, oh, you've missed your chance. So the train has left the station. Well, there'll be another train. <laughs> you have to trust that God will send it. And David says, of all I've been through, of all I put myself through, of all the ways I've lost track, when I awake and come to myself, oh, God, I'm still with you. And so I want to invite you today on this worship stream to hold in your heart the mere fact that God has not forgotten. That God doesn't forget the dreams he's poured into our lives. God, God, God doesn't toss out, no, no, any godly goal, any divine plan he gave you. No, God's waiting on you to wake up and realize you are still with him. And so we invite you today, from wherever you're worshiping, wherever you may find yourself this moment, whatever location, whatever place, whatever season or, 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 or station on your journey, to accept this truth today that when you await, God is still with you. And because God is, your dream has not expired. And so I want to invite you to not only accept that dream today, not only accept that it doesn't expire, but accept that God has a place for you to work out your dream. Yeah, yeah. To pursue the goals God gave you. To, 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 to accomplish the grand tasks that will fulfill your life forevermore and those around you. To unite with this fellowship. That's what so that, that, that you and I are made to, to strive, to serve, to be in this Christian fellowship one with another. We're made to be connected in the body of Christ. And even though right now, oh yeah, we're, we're separated across the city and across the states, across the country. that We can't be in the same room as we'd like to be. We can't quite nuzzle up in worship and uh, wrap shoulders together at the altar for prayer. Oh, God has found a way to bind us together anyhow. And so I want to invite you today, family, friend of God, wherever you are today, I want to invite you to connect with us in Christian fellowship with this family of God. That we extend to you this personal invitation that Christ is your Savior. That God is your creator, your redeemer, and guide. 
and that if you just receive him as your own, that today you are not only saved, but you have opportunity to have the renewal of your dreams that God has poured into your life. I invite you to type your, your hope, your, your dream, type your desire to be connected with God in the comment section. Send an email uh, to our uh, out, digital outreach minister, Minister Javon Bracey. Send a note to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram page that you may connect with us and we with you that we desire to ensure that you know your dream has not expired. And more than that, your relationship with God is always available. So we invite you to connect with us at this fellowship to give your life to Christ in this moment, even digitally and online, knowing that God is available to you. Reverend Jerry Oakner is on our telephone line today to receive your, your hopes to, to reconnect with Christ your Savior, to receive your desire to be a part of this Christian fellowship. Reverend Minister Javon Bracey on our digital page today, on our YouTube channel to receive your connection, your commitment, your desire to be closer to Christ our Savior. And we just invite you to reach out today to make the first, to make the second step, amen, to the first step God has made toward you that no matter when we awake, David reminds, we are still with God. God bless you, family. And may heaven smile upon us all. It is a privilege to lead our prayer this morning, and we know that prayer has the power to change things, especially when we gather collectively and corporately, even if it's virtually. God hears us and let our petitions rise. Please join me. Gracious God, our creator, the divine being, the creator of all things, heaven and below, Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. We come to you asking for more of you, more of your blessing, and we just thank you for who you are. And we want to continue to focus on who you are, Lord, despite all that is going on around us, Lord. Remind us in those times that you are God. Let us know more of your characteristics. Let's, let us find who you are more in the word and in nature and those around us, the things that you have created, Lord, because you are in all things. We are so grateful that you made us. You created us before we were even formed and you knew every step of our lives from the beginning and the end because you are the Alpha and the Omega and that you have destined each of us for individual plans, Lord. And we just ask that what you have created us to be, that you help it manifest in us, Lord. You said you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of one of power and of courage. Lord, help us to tap into that, Lord. And even when things seem to counter everything that we learn and that we know about you and that we know about ourselves, when threats arise, wherever we may be, remind us of who you are, your character, those, that God character that only you have, and that peace that we get knowing when you are present. Father, we ask for safety for those who have been threatened at HBCUs around this country, Lord, in celebration of Black History Month, that we celebrate our heritage, that we can celebrate this month with courage and not fear. Let us be proud of how you've made us, Lord. In those moments where we may feel shamed, we might feel defeated, Lord, strengthen us, set us up back on that rock put our feet up, lift our head up so that we can remember who you are and who you created us to be. But you said that you formed us in our mother's wombs. Remind us of that. Let our legacy and our heritage continue in the way that you see fit, that praises you, that glorifies you, and that others can see that we are wonderful. Father, we thank you for all of us, who, all of those who have joined this call, 
in this video, this service. We just thank you for each and every one of them. We ask that you put a blessing over their households. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person under the sound of my voice. We ask for a special blessing for the leaders of our church, especially our pastor, Lord. You know all things that it takes to be a shepherd of your flock, Lord. We ask for a special grace for leaders in that position, especially our pastor, Lord. We ask for renewal, for strength, for our creativity, and for rest, true rest, Lord. We ask for peace of mind, we ask for healing. We continually ask for healing for those who are sick and ill, who have been impacted by COVID, who have had to reassess their lives. And those who also are dealing with mental health issues, Lord, we ask for help, ask for peace. We ask for courage. And for those who feel moved to get help, we ask for you to move that and give the peace that goes along with that. So, that we are confirmed and that this is the way in which we are to go. The sheep know your voice, Lord, so guide us. We thank you again for allowing us to gather and we ask many more to come, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. You old family, we thank God now for this moment of Holy Communion. If you've not yet secured your communion elements, something in a cup and a, a bread or, or some symbolization of the same, we invite you to do that now as we prepare for Holy Communion virtually. As you do that, we take a moment to thank God today for the celebration of Black History Month. As we celebrate African American History Month, the shoulders on whose we stand, and the work of this fellowship across the decades. We're grateful to celebrate that in this month, in 2022, with these wonderful additions that have come to us from the continent from which we hail. Today, Reverend Oakster and I are wearing communion tops. I like that this covering, which covers our communion table, that have come to us from Accra, Ghana. We're thankful for our sister in ministry, a sister Afrique Nana, who has shared these garments with us to encourage and uplift our celebration of Black History Month here at New Hope. Mm -hmm. Afrique Nana's business in Accra, Ghana, employs individuals, men and women, who have been serving together alongside one another to provide both clothing and uh, authentic African attire for families, individuals, churches, and many others for decades. We're grateful to have a relationship and fellowship with her and thankful for these communion tops and table covering that we celebrate and share today. Our ministerial team will be serving communion in these tops in the months to come. And we just thank God today for this opportunity to be able to lift up our heritage as we celebrate Black History Month. In light of that, won't you bow with me as we lift a word of prayer for these new communion tops and this wonderful garment that covers our communion table that comes to us from the continent. Let's bow. Eternal God, we thank you today for all you've done and all that you are. We thank you, God, for the heritage of every human being on the face of this earth. Well, God, we thank you for all the many countries and continents from which all of us hail. We're grateful, God, for Reverend Oakston's heritage. I'm thankful, God, for my heritage. And we're thankful today to be able to celebrate the heritage of all in our fellowship. We're grateful, God, for those who are of indigenous heritage in this fellowship, for those who are of Latino heritage in this fellowship, those who are of Asian heritage in this fellowship, and many others, God. And we thank you today for our heritage as we celebrate Black History Month. We ask, God, that you would consecrate these table, these communion tops, this table covering, and all, God, that we hold dear to as symbols of who you've made us to be. Because, God, these symbols simply help us to celebrate, ultimately, God, you as creator, author and finisher of our faith, redeemer of life, and creator of heaven and earth. So, God, we thank you for our heritage. We thank you for our fellowship. But most of all, we thank you for Christ Jesus, our Savior for whose sacrifice we come to this table, O oh God, to share Holy Communion with you. We thank you for this and every other blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Won't you prepare now to share with me our church covenant together? These words we believe are those that God would have us to remember as a model and guide for the way in which we are serving one with another in fellowship. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us toward its expenses, for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek to the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill toward all to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from New Hope Baptist Church, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Let's pray together. God, we thank you now for this covenant that binds our hearts one to another, and for these elements, O oh God, with which we celebrate Holy Communion to you. Please consecrate, God, this cup and this bread, and all of those we share in our homes or wherever we may be. Consecrate, God, the elements we bring to this moment, knowing that, God, they cleanse our hearts and souls and help us to remember your only Son who gave his life for us. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you now to place in your hand that bread, that symbol, which represents the body of Christ and your moment of Holy Communion today, as Reverend Jerry Oaksner comes to share with us these thoughts and reflections about the body of Christ. Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. He said, this it represents my body sacrificed for you. Take and eat of it. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Take an eat. Thank you, Jesus. And then if you'll secure the cup, water, juice, soft drink, beverage that you're able to consecrate to God's service in Holy Communion today. And as you raise that cup, we remind one another that this cup represents the blood of Christ that Jesus, as he gathered around the table with his 12 disciples, share with them that this cup represents the blood that he shed for you and for me. And that because of Christ's blood, you and I have the opportunity for the forgiveness of our sins, for redemption in Christ and eternal life with God. 
And because of that shed blood on Calvary's cross, we receive this cup in remembrance of the one who shed his blood for us, Jesus Christ. Let's receive together. Why don't you pray with us? God, we thank you for this Holy Communion moment. And we thank you, God, for the power of these symbols that they connect, oh God, with the body and blood of Christ Jesus, our Savior. We thank you, God, for the forgiveness of our sins, our shortcomings, our missteps, our faults, and our confusion in this month gone by. And ask, God, that you would redeem, forgive, and set us at one with God again. We ask, God, that you would take whatever we brought to this moment, oh Lord, anything, God, that stands in the way of us being who you've called us to be, that you would take it, God, now, that you would hold it in your care, and that you would, God, wash eternal glory over it, that our hearts and minds may be, may be set right in you. We thank you, God, for the power you hold to forgive, redeem, and cleanse us anew one more time. And in this moment, God, we thank you for it in the precious name of Jesus. And we say together, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Noah family, we pray this experience of worship has been a blessing to you. Our friends and from, from near and far, we're thankful for your streaming with us today from all across this country and beyond. We thank God for your presence as we celebrate hope in Christ together. I invite you to bow with me as we share this moment of benediction. And now unto you, O God, who is able to keep us from falling, to present us as faultless before your presence on the throne in glory through the redeeming power of your only son, Jesus Christ. Because of him, O God, and unto you, we do not give our glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And we say together, amen. God bless you, family. Have a wonderful week. We would invite you to share this video with others, to subscribe to our channel if you've not already, to take a moment of fellowship virtually in the comment section on the YouTube channel, on the phone lines as you share together as we thank God one for another and celebrate hope in Christ together. Have a wonderful week.